If you think back a bit, you can probably remember your math teacher telling you that knowing your times tables well will really pay off in your math career. Here's another example of that. If you know your times tables well, you'll find factoring easy. If you haven't seen your times tables for a while, you may wish to spend a little time refreshing your memory before we move forward. Let's start our discussion about factors with an example. Factor the number 12. This can also be asked as, what are the factors of 12? What we're really asking here is, what numbers can be involved in a multiplication that results in 12? So, let's think of our multiplications that result in 12. Thinking back to our times tables, we know that 6 times 2 equals 12. And this is written as a multiplication question. 6 times 2 equals 12. But if we turn it around, we have a factoring problem. Here, we ask what is the result when we multiply 6 and 2? And the answer is 12, our multiplication question. Here, we ask what numbers can be multiplied to get our 12? We break it down, a factoring question. So we can now list 6 and 2 as factors of 12. Let's keep going. Perhaps there are more factors of 12. Again, we think back to our times tables. And we recall that 3 times 4 is also 12. So if we switch that around, we can show 12 factored. 12 equals 3 times 4. And we can list 3 and 4 as factors of 12. Keep thinking. What else can be multiplied to get 12? Well, I suppose 12 times 1 equals 12. Or if we switch that around, we can show 12 factored. 12 equals 12 times 1. And therefore, we can list 12 and 1 as also factors of 12. So we have 6 factors of 12, or 3 factor pairs. Let's take a moment and learn more about factors. Each factor of a number can be identified as a prime number, a composite number, or neither. A prime number has only two factors, itself and one, while a composite number has more than two factors. The only numbers that we don't categorize as either prime or composite are 0 and 1. Let's look at our factors of 12 and determine which ones are prime, which ones are composite, and which are neither. Let's start with a 6. Being comfortable with our times tables allows us to quickly recognize that both 6 times 1 and 2 times 3 results in 6. So with more than two factors, we know that 6 must be a composite number. 2. We think of 2. What can be multiplied to get 2? Well, the only way to get 2 would be to multiply 2 times 1. Thus, we only have two factors. The number itself, 2 and 1. Thus, we know that 2 is a prime number. 3. 3 is also a number that we can only get by multiplying 3 times 1. So again, this fits the criteria for a prime number. 4. We can remember that we can multiply 2 times 2 to get 4. Thus, we know that 4 times 1 and 2 times 2 are both ways to get 4. So, we have more than two factors and we know that 4 is a composite number. 12. Well, this is an interesting one. We're in the middle of factoring 12, and we need to determine whether the 12 itself is composite or prime or neither. We can clearly see that we've already identified that 12 has 6 factors, so it must be a composite number. 1. Well, the last one here and we might be tempted to call this a prime number. But if we think about it, the only way to multiply to get 1 is 1 times 1. 
Note that if we were to list the factors, we'd only have one factor, one. To be a prime number, we need two factors. Thus, one ends up being in the neither category. In this tutorial, we took our first look at factors. We see that factoring is just the exact opposite of multiplying. In multiplying, we have multiple numbers and we multiply them to get one answer. In factoring, we start with one number and break it down to get multiple factors. We can see that being comfortable with our times tables makes factoring much easier. And once we have our factors, we also learn to identify the factors as prime numbers, composite numbers, or neither in the cases of 0 and 1.